uh, we'll be doing a seminar to explain the uh, acne from a medical perspective, uh, but also from an aesthetic perspective so that how we can implement procedures, but also understand the products we have available to treat this most difficult condition. So today's lecture is sponsored by German Co., uh, who are the manufacturers and distributors of Nelly de Wurst, uh, Druid BioLove, an excellent set of formulations for many different situations, especially our baby line, Druid, a manufacturer, as well as a distributor, Alaska, for waxing, and Europe Lab for those that are interested in private label. Uh, Dorman Co. specializes in natural and organic products, and the products are considered premium on the marketplace, not to associate with expensive, because that's relative to what one's perspective is with regards to price. So what we want to talk about today is something that's actually quite common in terms of an individual getting or generating uh, acne. We call this situation acne vulgaris or common acne. And one out of three people will have this condition. Today's situation because of COVID and having to wear a mask, we'll also see the effects of acne developing in areas where the environment is trapped and stagnation of air as well as the accumulation of Dead cells and moisture can lead to the right circumstance for the situation to arise. So you may want to consider this presentation also for people that are having mask acne. And uh, as a result of this, you want to be able to recommend products as well as doing protocol in your treatment room to affect that area. So acne is common uh, for most individuals. It can be in the face, which is the number one situation that we see also on the neck, especially around the uh, corner of the jaw, uh, by the ears, on the chest, the back, and the shoulders. So it can arise for some individuals on the buttocks and the legs. And just keep in mind that sometimes when people are doing body wraps, as an example, uh, you might have a client actually breaking in on those effective areas. It usually has to do with, uh, again, the accumulation of dead cells and exfoliating and cleansing properly should help to remedy the situation to a great degree. But when we talk about the acne situation itself, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, the terminology should be clear. Uh, we have open comedones, closed comedones, papules, pustules, cysts, and nodules. So in the upper picture, you can see that how the buildup of whiteheads are there. And on the bottom picture, you can see that how it's almost like an angry type of situation because of the local erythema that's actually associated with the vulgaris. So it is a chronic condition. It's an inflammation of the skin caused by bacterium. And when we talk about how the situation evolves, we associate acne with five different grades. So depending on the severity of the situation, you may need to implement protocol where the client actually does home care first before they come into uh, treatment. So stage one where we have, or grade one where we have microcomedones and small comedones, this is sometimes associated with uh, adolescence. So you have a change of the physical body because of hormones becoming activated. So the oil glands, which were dormant uh, before adolescence, the skin usually is very soft, very fine. We call it baby-like skin. But as soon as hormones start to challenge the body, you have sebaceous activity starting to increase. And because the surface of the skin itself is tight, there is no oils coming to the surface. They're just building up underneath. Part of it is because dehydration can be a potential problem for the surface of the skin, such as using soaps or detergents on the skin. Papules, which become more elevated, uh, becoming more irritating or sometimes sensitive, create pressure on the nerve endings and pustules where inflammation is starting to occur because you have the presence of bacterium within the actual uh, follicle 
and that leads to people picking and creating issues with it. Nodules, which are even more painful and sometimes uh, spread out over the skin, uh, can be problematic in that people tend to create uh, stress to the area. So we have to talk about picking and how you can actually contribute to more acne or acne spreading because of uh, reinfection in certain areas and cysts and nodules deep in the skin, which are extremely painful for some individuals and quite disfiguring if the skin is damaged or destroyed early in the condition. So I suggest when you're doing your consultation for acne, you should have a skin chart in your treatment room or in your consultation area. So you can talk to your clients with regards to the actual skin and its structure, where the oil gland actually is, where the capillaries are, where the outer layer is accumulating dead cells or buildup leading to occlusion of the follicle for the right environment for a bacterium to survive and thrive. And most importantly, we want to consider that how the pH of the skin being very relevant to the condition of the microbiome. We want bacteria on the surface of the skin to be in a healthy balance. Uh, the skin itself can remedy itself if it's in the right environment, but we wanna be able to assist as much as we can so people can get the maximum results. So if we have grade one acne, some of the pictures I'm going to show you, you have blackheads. A lot of people uh, tend to pick their skin mainly because uh, it's visible and sometimes magnified with these magnifying mirrors that people can get. And sometimes they're just a little too aggressive with playing with their skin. As it becomes more evolved, closed comedones are a combination of dead cells. Uh, altered sebum is basically oxygenated oils, so they become black. I always think of oils like silver on a candlestick that tarnishes, so you can see a change because of the color. And there are so many different causes for acne. Bacteria, yeast, mites, forfarins are the waste, and it's all associated with this buildup uh, that's occurring within the follicle and on the surface of the follicle. Pigmentation can be local. If we're dealing with Fitzpatrick's uh, two through six, we can see that how pigmentation can result from the overstimulation to the local area since we can associate acne and keratinocytes directly since they are within the follicle. We can associate the overstimulation of pigment within the area just from the trauma that's occurring locally. Cellular debris or waste. Uh, dead cells, squamous cells that are not being eliminated properly have to do with cleansing, toxins, impurities, and ROS. Uh, anything to do with reactive oxidative stress, which is basically pollution, free radicals. So in grade one, the inflammation stage starts to develop, leading to whiteheads, closed comedones. And then as the dead cells start to accumulate, you have an oxidation of the area, which leads to the formation of buildup underneath the surface of the skin, feeling like micro cysts. And the cell wall itself, the keratinocytes on the outer surface of your cell, creating almost a cement-like structure to protect you from the world coming at you, but also unfortunately creating the right environment if it's not uh, healthily uh, cleansed or exfoliated where you have buildup leading to the right situation for acne to form. Papules in uh, the second grade, the inflammation stage, when we look at the pressure that's created locally, you can see that how erythema or redness is also a factor. So in future uh, presentations, I'm going to be talking about the difference between acne rosacea and acne vulgaris. So just remember acne rosacea, rosacea means rosy skin. So whenever we see a pink undertone to the skin, we can associate it with the circulatory system. So in this picture is an example with an individual that's a Fitzpatrick one bordering a two, meaning skin color. You can see that the redness is very local, but the overall complexion is pink. This we also call a reactive type of skin. So if grade two acne with papules 
are actually uh, present and you see uh, this erythema, the purpose would be to soothe the skin down at the same time that you're helping to eliminate the buildup of dead cells, but also killing any bacterium that may, may be within the follicle. So there are a couple of factors that are actually present here, and you want to be able to treat the circumstance accordingly. So in the third grade, where we have even more inflammation, the pustule itself uh, is going to have a lot of bacteria. Now, dermatologists don't necessarily do a biopsy of a pustule to know what particular bacterium is actually involved in the situation. The most common is the Piacnes bacterium. And as a result of bacteria thriving in an anaerobic environment, meaning without oxygen, you have bacterium that's actually replicating very quickly. As a result of it, there's growth within a local environment. So we, we can talk about bacteria building or growing uh, in terms of millions and billions within a very short period of time in the inflammatory stage. So when we're talking about the P. acnes bacterium, it's a, again an anaerobic, meaning without oxygen, that's thriving within the follicle. It releases inflammatory substances. The waste is called porphyrins. And the microcysts or the little bumps that are present will also be associated with redness because locally the capillaries or capillaries, if you're in Canada, the capillaries are quite abundant underneath the sebaceous gland. So you have local uh, energy that can create issues with uh, the little red dots or red pimples. So if we look at the cross section of normal skin, you'll see that how the, on the left-hand side, you'll see that how the gland itself, the sebaceous gland itself is in a normal size. As it becomes more inflamed or irritated, it grows and expands. And of course, it's within the actual follicle that you're seeing an abundant uh, formation of impurities, pus. So people want to squeeze uh, the area. The challenge is that how the lining of the follicle is actually quite thin and fragile. So you, since we don't know exactly what's within the follicle, again, a biopsy is not being done on a pustule to see exactly what is present within all of this fluid. So you may have the Piacnes bacterium, you may have E. coli, you may have staph, you may have lots of different bacterium, you may have mold, you can have Candida albicans, you can have lots of things, parasites, et cetera, et cetera, within the actual follicle. So if the lining of the follicle is actually damaged from picking, what can happen is you can end up with a lateral infection, which means that how the impurities within the follicle can move into the dermal area where we have circulation. And as a result of it, these pathogens can actually move laterally through the bloodstream and affect the uh, overall body. So in severe acne, we really want to help to educate our clients with regards to why picking is not uh, relevant or important to the condition. It's more to do with hygiene and proper skin care. So when we look at nodules, when they become severe, inflamed like this, scar tissue can start to develop primarily because you have collagen formation within the dermis, reticular fibers start to create this dense uh, fibroblast activity and the fibroblast being the cell that's re responsible for producing collagen, but the overstimulation locally lead to regular reticular formation, meaning fibers themselves are not in a normal stratification. So it's a different type of scar compared to collagen that we talk about when it comes to anti-aging. So this becomes a more challenging condition to affect if it's uh, being degraded consistently. And as we see here in this picture, it can be quite uh, horrific in terms of the psychological trauma somebody can be experiencing if they get into a grade five. These are the people that we have to have compassion for because obviously judgment is a big problem when it comes to uh, the latter stages of vulgaris. So in the grades, mild, moderate, and severe, the more we're talking about something mild, for instance, 
three pimples on your face, we can call it acne, right? So a lot of people, uh, that's quite uh, relevant to somebody that's probably in their adolescence. As it becomes more compounded in terms of uh, condition from mild to moderate, it's still a non-inflammatory condition. You have blackheads and potentially whiteheads, which we also call milia but you also have inflammation going into moderate to severe. So this is again, trauma to not only the sebaceous gland, but the microcirculatory system within the dermis. And here, as I mentioned a moment ago, the inflammation, if the actual lining is ruptured, spreading through the dermis, and this creates an issue with uh, infection that becomes from local to general. And the more general it is, more likely the dermatologist might wanna put that individual on uh, medication, which is not always a great thing for the skin or for the body itself. The most important thing is we associated vulgaris with an increase of hormones, specifically testosterone, and males generally being oilier uh, not always, but generally oilier, the buildup of oils and dead cells accumulation on the epidermis leads to the right environment for the bacterium to thrive. Women may go through this if they are cyclical, when their estrogen starts to shift during hormonal fluctuations and the testosterone and progesterone become slightly elevated, they may mimic a male temporarily. As a result of it, they can have local oiliness in the jawline. Typically, you'll see it on either the chin or the full jaw. We call it the beard area. And as a result of it, they have breakouts in that area. Of course, if we're talking about hormones and we're talking about a shift in terms of uh, life uh, around menopause, uh, this can also occur. Testosterone becoming more dominant. When we talk about microbes and the protection, we have to talk about the microbiome and exactly how things actually should work. So we want you to consider what healthy skin really is. Healthy skin is a barrier function. It's to protect you from the world that's coming at you, but it's also to help you with what's within. So if things are going out of balance or fluctuating, it's usually the result of things that you're doing on the outside that's destroying or changing the microbiome itself. There is a balance as this scale represents. There is a balance with regards to what should be there and what shouldn't be there. You don't want all good. You want, it's a flight or flight uh, situation. You want to have balance with bacterium so that how the body can do its job of protecting you. So we want principles to be considered with regards to the pH of the skin is itself. pH, potential hydrogen. Most people will know pH if they have a pool, they'll know that how the pH of the water should be seven, which is a neutral state. But the pH of skin, it's actually on the acidic side. It should be 5.5. So the acid mantle, which is what we're measuring, is the combination of sweat or excretions from the eccrine gland and oil, which is excretions from the sebaceous gland. So the combination of the sweat and the oil leads to the production of this invisible barrier that we call the acid mantle. And when the acid mantle is stable, then we have the right balance of good as well as bad bacterium. So all these bacteria that we're mentioning here, the corneobacterium, bacterium, the staph bacterium, the propiobacterium, the acne's bacterium, that is, they're already there. It's a question of whether the body's in balance to be able to be resilient so the bacterium doesn't evolve to become a situation that we don't want to have happen. But in the microbiome, in terms of all, all the things that are present, such as these that I have listed here, it's part of who we are. And you don't know what is potentially on the skin. So we live in a world where unfortunately things are propagating and replicating at a rapid rate. And unfortunately they are also evolving in terms of their DNA structure and they can, make, they can become high res, highly resilient uh, to ingredients that are commonly found on the marketplace. So this is where research comes into play with regards to affecting the skin. But when we talk about what's going on internally, when it comes to our saliva and the intestinal area, as well as the vaginal 
area, we have to consider the different types of microbiome and how every area of our bodies have a different pH value, but also a different uh, purpose. I'm not being facetious here with regards to understanding reproductive uh, areas and how they help an individual, but it's important to appreciate that everything that's going on in the inside ultimately affects how the skin is evolving on the outside. So the microbiome of the skin, again, we're talking about the epidermis and the dermis and the evolution of impurities that may potentially create a situation for that individual. So in an adult, when we're talking about per square inch or square centimeter, there's over a million different types of bacterium that are actually found in that area. So you'll have thousands of species of mites, parasites, impurities that are actually in the area. And this makes a big issue with uh, infection. So people play with their face, people touch their face, and we want to make sure that how uh, they're not doing anything like that to uh, create a, a problem for their skin uh, to evolve. So this just lists the behaviors of what they do. As with any uh, situation with something that wants to survive, humans are considered the host and the parasites or the pathogens that are on the surface of the skin want to survive and they are going to be looking for food. And dead cells are food, oil is a food, and the combination of heat, oil, moisture leads to the right environment for pathogens to survive. So beneficial bacteria, which helps to preserve the balance of the skin, are listed here. So they are found in abundance. And again, it's that balance between good and bad that makes a big difference with our body being resilient to protect us from the infection. So healthy skin in terms of balance also has a lot of, uh, I just have a nice list here for you to consider. I don't think it's relevant to actually memorize any of this. The main thing here is that how we're dealing with a small percentage of bacterium that actually needs to be out of balance to create the right environment for acne to actually occur. So we talk about the P. acnes bacterium being the most dominant with regards to the actual infection, but it could be caused by other situations uh, arising that leads to the evolution of the condition itself. So in an unbalanced skin where the proliferation of the piacnes is present, you're going to have stress. And this is where the beginnings of an infection can occur. So the more imbalanced it becomes, the more that we see the bacterium is evolving. We see it going from a local area to a general area and the dominance of the bacteria becomes a huge evolution with regards to the grade the individual will be. So after disinfection and we, uh, we actually start to repair, we can see that how the bacterium is resolving and our immune system becomes better balanced. So the combination of all these things with her immune system, developing the right balance with uh, acidity makes a big difference. So every uh, situation that we're talking about with an individual has to do with balance. And when the immune system is working in the person's favor from the inside as well as the outside, then you can actually expect uh, change for the skin. So. If you're using detergents on your face, a lot of people use soap bars. The pH of soap bars are quite alkaline in most cases. So you're actually shifting the pH of the skin towards an alkaline state. And just again, as a reminder, the pH of human skin should be around 5.5, which is on the acid side. So if you use something too uh, alkaline, you're actually creating an issue with the pH barrier itself. So a lot of things with sodium lauryl sulfate, all these things need to be addressed. So in your clinical consultation, take the time to educate your clients with regards to the function of skin. We don't want them overwhelmed. You can show them the simple skin chart, but most importantly, you need to talk about what their needs will be. If you're using any devices within your facility, this is a very inexpensive machine. It's called a Woods Lamp. 
You have it in the format where you can actually have it in a treatment room, which is the larger picture here with the silver foil uh, surrounding the camera. And then you have the unit, which is found in most aesthetic rooms. The problem with that unit in most aesthetic rooms is that the individual can't actually see their face. So you are seeing where the condition is, but most importantly, they should see uh, their skin as well because a picture is worth a thousand words. So when you're looking at the situation, how it evolves, we can see that how just by using light analysis, uh, we can see where the porphyrins, which is the uh, orange and yellow areas, we can see where the oils are oxidizing. This is where we help to differentiate between oils and blackheads, oils being yellow and blackheads, or closed comedones being the orange lights. Here we can see where the bacterium is more active. The central axis of one's face, which is basically the T-zone, we are uh, more abundant with sebaceous glands as well as capillaries and nerve endings. So the combination of these uh, factors make a big difference with how the skin can evolve. So porphyrins in the sebaceous gland is just waste. With the light, we're able to see other infections. In this case here, the person has uh, a little issue here with herpes on the upper lip. So obviously we don't want them to touch that area. And you can also see hyperpigmentation uh, associated with the acne on the person's forehead. So with your demo, digital imaging, again, for medical aesthetics, we want you to be able to differentiate between conditions. So here you see in the pictures, uh, the middle image, which is of the capillary structures and the increase in uh, hemoglobin in that area, one would lead to believe that she has a little bit of issues with rosacea as well. And you can see the freckling pattern, which is genetically predisposed, becoming more apparent. And we can see that this is sometimes associated with acne as well. So bringing into your business any type of device that helps to encourage not only understanding of the condition, but treatment of the condition in terms of its evolution can have a great effect in terms of your marketing strategy. So we recommend many different types of image, uh, imaging systems. This one here is a little bit more expensive, but we're talking about a Vizia machine that's used especially in medical aesthetics to redefine what it is we're doing with an individual and also to gauge the change of skin over time. Sometimes acne, especially in grade one, could be treated uh, very quickly and you have a resolve within a week or two. And sometimes in grade five, you're talking about months and sometimes years if the person is not looking after their inner uh, body. So the device itself is very straightforward. We have information. You can contact our 1-800 number and you can talk to representatives with regards to uh, this device. It's uh, called Visia, V-I-S-I-A. And you can talk to our division of platinum equipment and they can give you more information with uh, what we can do with this device. I'm going to skip through a couple of slides here because I think you grasp uh, hopefully you grasp it, that how any tool that you're using within your facility should be used for not only educational purposes, but also as a referral to where the person started and how they evolve over a period of time. And the beauty of such devices is you can see the before and after as a result of it, you can educate your clients as to what they're doing or what they're not doing. And here's a good example of porphyrins and you wanna see that change. So we look at our graph and we see it change if the person is doing home care or uh, also complementing their home care with protocol, which means services within your establishment. Everybody wants to have flawless, perfect skin. So the goal is to get to this point where we have an image that most people would associate with a youthful complexion with just a little bit of bacteria a little bit of pigmentation. We can't get rid of everything 100%. That would be ideal, but the goal is to change a situation. So here we can see how the skin is evolving and how the condition is actually changing. This is for scar tissue. 
And then again for laxity or looseness and hyperpigmentation and textures improving along the way. So here is a great example of before and after in a fairly uh, moderate stage of acne. And of course, any person that's experiencing that would like to see it evolve to change. So being able to modify the skin, again, we're not affecting the environment externally. We're looking at the environment locally or the microbiome, and we want to be able to address how the skin is actually evolving uh, over time. Again, with the rosacea and again with the blackheads. Lots of slides, but the goal is really people are looking for solutions. So when we talk about the causes of acne, Genetically, 50% have a chance of developing acne if somebody already has acne. So we have to consider the male lineage as well as the female lineage. And more than likely, if both parents had acne, the child will have acne uh, as a result of it. Hygiene becomes a problem if people are using soap bars on their whole body, especially their face. And products that are old, a lot of people use products that they've inherited from maybe a sister or a brother or a parent or just staying in their cupboards too long, expecting it to still have value, and it doesn't. So anything where the uh, products themselves have uh, started to oxidize, if they have a strange smell or not a normal smell, they should probably be disposed of or recycled into the garbage so that how uh, the skin is not being contaminated. Any uh, ingredients that would be having an allergic or an irritating factor should also be eliminated. And with regards to what's going on internally, if you are working with a dietitian, if you're working as an um, internal medicine uh, specialist, or you are an esthetician and you really just need to understand a little bit more about how the internal structures or the systems inside uh, work, I would refer to the uh, module that I had on body types uh, with regards to how uh, understanding the morphologies can make a big difference with understanding how to treat your clients. But everybody should appreciate that whatever you put into your body, especially more refined foods, will make a difference with how the skin will actually function. So the client health and history card, I highly recommend your clients fill them out thoroughly and review it with the client so you're on the same page with regards to what can make a difference to their skin. Other products in terms of understanding acne are things that people don't necessarily consider uh, very fashionable to have your hair, not my hair, but have your hair styled with gels or balms or uh, other chemicals creating problems for the skin if there's buildup. Uh, anything to do with exercising to relieve your stress where your skin has temporarily been altered because you are in an environment where there's other people and it's the introduction of foreign agents creating the right uh, situation for the challenge for the acne itself to be challenged. So in terms of uh, people that are having blood work done, if you're working with a dermatologist or or, or are a dermatologist, there's a lot of things to consider. But one of the things that just a little um, easy thing to observe, H. pylori, uh, which is Helobacteria uh, pylori, which is the sixth uh, one on this bullet here. H. pylori is actually a problem that tends to occur in the gut when this, the gut itself is uh, too acidic. And the way you actually can observe this is actually just by uh, the odor emitting from someone's mouth, meaning they have uh, bad breath. So if there's too much bad bacterium within the gut, it's usually related to uh, diet, but it's also to do with pH. And the shift of the internal system, the gut itself, makes a big difference with regards to how the overall body is functioning and how the skin will actually appear because you are actually having absorption of too much negative uh, in terms of bacterium from the digestive system into the bloodstream. And this can affect how the skin 
can actually appear. Other things that are out of balance, such as zinc, uh, B vitamins, biotin, if you have a thyroid issue, these are things that are a bit more sophisticated in the analysis. But the most common uh, one that you can actually talk about is really about gut, uh, acid levels in the gut, having too much uh, acid leading to acid reflux. Uh, so halitosis or bad breath is something to just observe or to ask uh, the client about with regards to their health. So we educate about cleansing. I have a habit of having our clients uh, wash their face in front of me before we get started with a treatment. So to make sure they know how to use the product, I recommend people that are stressed because of uh, lifestyle choices or just the general environmental situation these days it creates an, a shift in the balance, specifically cortisol levels can start to increase. So you see uh, weight gain in the mid part of the body, but a lack of sleep will make a difference with regards to hormonal factors and this can challenge the way the skin actually works. Goes without saying, highly refined foods do not help you. So in your discussion, talk about all the things that I mentioned a minute ago, uh, so that how your uh, clients have an appreciation for what's going on with regards to the choices they can be making to help their body. So now talking about what you can do to actually help your clients. Nelly DeVust has developed the first organic acne grade line, medical acne grade line in the world. And the beauty of these products is that they are organically certified by Cosmos, which is a European standard. So the acne line itself is not um, overwhelming for the average person because there's not a lot of products to consider, but it does many things in in one step or sometimes two steps. So there are products available specifically for the treatment room and they're in the brown bottles here. These are chemical peels. In fact, these are the first chemical solutions that are organically certified for acne in the world. And you'll notice the two red stamps on the products. One of them is called EcoCert, which is ecology certification, a standard from uh, Europe and Cosmos Organic, another European standard as well. So the products are vegan, meaning no animal ingredients, no honey. So for those people that are concerned about their environment or the welfare of other things on the planet besides humans, this might be critical in uh, their wanting to try it. There are no GMO ingredients, so there's nothing here creating an issue, for, again, for people that are concerned about that in part of the environment. And it's gluten-free, no animal testing, and everything is recyclable in terms of materials. So you want to control the acne, prevent the acne, and clear it up as well. So when we talk about the key ingredients that are actually being utilized, the raw materials are sourced all over the world. The key here is a combination or a synergy of ingredients that are helping to change the situation. So we're working germally and epidermally and systemically by challenging the circumstance, we can actually start to see change by utilizing ingredients that make a big difference for the skin. So in Canada, we have also received the natural health product uh, number, which is the certification where the products have been tested by the government to ensure that they are safe for the consumer. It is also received the health, not only um, the NHP, but the uh, FDA has also approved the products for the American market. So the cleansers that we have, one of them is this excellent formula called the micellar foam or micellar foam, depending on your pronunciation, French versus English. So micellar foams or micelles are molecules that attract water and oil and dirt. So this particular cleanser can be used with or without water. And if you're using it without water, you have to let it sit on the skin for about 15 to 30 seconds and then lift it off with a, a cotton or a soft cloth. So the key here with the micellar foam is for those people that are very active, let's say you're going to the gym or you're going to the beach, or you're someone that is maybe tired before you go to bed, you can have it right at your bed size or, or counter. You simply apply it to your face. It, it comes out as a mousse. 
you put it on the skin, you let it activate, and then you lift it off and you can look on your cotton or your cloth and you can see that how there's uh, residue or waste. So technically what you will have here is a bacteriostatic agent and exfoliating agent as well. So the bacteriostatic agent will be from the combination of the magnolia and the lavender but you also have here the salicylic acid, which is plant derived from willow bark, and you have enough exfoliation going on with your salicylic to help to reduce the potential for buildup on the skin. Nice, easy solution for people to go to the gym. You can just put it into your gym bag and away you go. For those that have more challenging acne, especially uh, when we're talking about grades two through five, the gel cleanser will be a little bit stronger and you do need to use this with water. So when you have your patient coming into your treatment room, I suggest to take a little bit of this cleanser and put it into their hand and have them wash their hands so they can see that it emulsifies, it creates a sud, uh, suds and you're going to have here a combination of uh, foam, which most people would equate to clean or cleansing but you're gonna have a very pleasant smell, which would be from the lavender. But the combination again of the bacteriostatic and the exfoliating agent will help to control the buildup that's, cre that's creating a problem for the acne to actually survive. Again, we want to ensure that we don't have an environment where it is anaerobic uh, for the bacterium. So meaning we don't want clog pores. And if oxygen is getting into the follicle, then P. acnes bacterium or any bacterium that's within the area that thrives uh, without oxygen will be destroyed or eliminated because we've just changed the parameters of the condition. So after the skin is cleansed, uh, a pH balance needs to occur. So this is where your toner comes into play. So for those people that are prone to erythema or redness, the toner will help to resolve uh, some of this because the pH is shifting, but inflammation is also changing here. So burdock is actually introduced here as well as the lavender because you're going to have an anti-inflammatory within the product itself. So whenever you use the toner, if you find that how your skin flushes during the day, you may want to take a little bit of the toner with you in your gym bag or your uh, bag, whatever you're carrying either to work or to school or to what or whatever situation, the beach. Uh, so you can just spritz your face and quickly calm the skin down so that how you don't have this inflammatory response. The serum, which is specifically for uh, local use, will be to destroy the uh, bacterium evolving in the area. It's for personal use. So you're not contaminating the formula if you're using it personally. If you're sharing it with somebody else, that may be an issue. So it's important that how for people that are actually challenging their skin, not only they become more disciplined with using products, but they should become more self-aware as to how things are actually evolving. So as soon as you start to feel something actually building up as an example, if you are a female and you are menstruating, usually about five days before your cycle, you can start to feel sometimes a little pimple uh, developing. This is usually because of a shift in the estrogenic of the estrogenic level within your body. So your testosterone level is becoming slightly elevated. As I mentioned before, the shift in hormones will lead to more oils and more buildup. But if it's a local issue, such as around your chin or jawline, take this serum and roll it onto the area several times a day to help to kill the bacteria. And it will also help to exfoliate the local area. So you're not helping, to, you're not contributing to buildup, but it's also breaking down the fats, which are your uh, sebaceous uh, excretions. So we want to control the situation uh, as much as we can. So in doing so, if the area has breakouts, local uh, pustules, papules, this is where the gel comes into play. So in the mask situation that people are having a challenge with, they may need to use the uh, cleanser, the toner, and the gel just in the jawline if their mask is contributing to breakouts. So to resolve 
the condition is really to reduce the buildup, but you can't help it if you're wearing something that's actually affecting the area because there is no air when you have a mask, there is no air coming to the surface of the skin. All you're having is carbon dioxide, which is from the exhale, now accumulating underneath your mask and the heat, the moisture again in dead cells leads to the right environment for bacteria to grow. So you might want to consider a solution using some of the acne products specifically for mask acne in that area. But generally, if we're talking about any of the grades of acne, one through five, you don't necessarily need the gel for the whole face. You may just need it locally, whether it's the cheek, the forehead, the jawline, etc. And the bioacne mask, which is excellent to resolve scar tissue as well as the, as the actual condition itself can be used a couple of times a week uh, to help to change the situation. So if you are using the acne mask generally, it will have a little bit of erythemic effect because you want to increase cellular toner uh, cellular turnover to reduce scar tissue. So in your treatment room, when you use this mask, applying it with a brush or with uh, uh, gloved hands, uh, this it, it's a clay and the clay itself, which is going to make a difference with regards to uh, rebuilding the mineral composition that the skin should be having. We're using oceanic clay in this uh, situation and as well as kaolin, bentonite. All of these clays will help to wick oils, reducing the buildup within the uh, sebaceous area, the follicle. For professional use, uh, we have a salicylic acid that is uh, specifically to help to get rid of the buildup. It's a low concentration. It does have a little bit of a numbing effect and the numbing effect and the base of this is aloe vera. So it's soothing to the skin. It can be left on for 15 to 25 minutes. So it'll help with uh, grade one acne for sure. But the more complex the situation, we also have an alpha hydroxy peel, which is lactic acid in a higher concentration, 20%. So when you are using the salicylic and the alpha hydroxy uh, together, the, uh, the salicylic going on first and the alpha hydroxy going on second, the alpha hydroxy will help with scar tissue, hyperpigmentation, and will also have the side effect of reducing fine lines. So these two formulas, the salicylic and the alpha hydroxy acid, uh, when they're on the skin for 15 to 25 minutes, they do need to be neutralized. So we have a formula specifically to bring the skin back into a new, more neutral state. So your acids will be creating trauma or stress to the skin and you need to shift it back into a more normal state so the client is comfortable and not affected by the environment uh, that they're going to be going out with. So your bioacne facial could be the first organic facial that you introduce if you've not used these formulas before. It's a nice, easy protocol. You're just cleansing the skin uh, first. If you want to do exfoliation, we do have an organic exfoliant that's actually in our biotense line that you can use to slough off dead cells and impurities. So you can create different levels of service depending on what you're looking for. But with the acne facial, you are using protocol that is getting right to the treatment and as a result of it, you can have dramatic results with regards to the change of the actual skin texture, the pore size, the buildup of blackheads, comedones, whiteheads. Uh, so whether they be open or closed, whether it be papules, pustules, microcysts, all this can be changed because of the way you actually change the skin uh, by using products. So here in the list of formulas, again, it's not very complicated. Step one is choose a cleanser. If the person is on the sensitive side or they're more on the rosacea side, I would go with a micellar foam. If they're not, then you go with the gel cleanser. And some people may have both cleansers, one specifically for environments where they don't have access to water, such as the gym or the beach or be besides their bed. And 
Uh, just a little note here with the micellar cleanser, you can use it to remove light makeup as well. The second cleanser, which is the gel cleanser, does need water. A small amount with water will emulsify. So your step one is your cleanse. Step two, to rebalance the pH of the skin, which is integral to balance of the microbiome. Just a spray bottle, you miss the face, a couple of spritzes, and you can lightly spread it over with your clean hands. And then moisturize for most individuals will be step four. If the person does have local pustules, step three is applied first, and then step four over that area. Once a week or twice a week, based on the condition, the person can do a mask. And if their uh, situation is more severe, they can put the mask on. And uh, quite frankly, they can go to bed with the mask on. So for home care, it's steps one, two, three, four, and five. And again, if you're talking about minor acne, they can sometimes just be going with the micellar foam and straight to uh, step four, which is the gel treatment for that local area. If you're just having occasional breakouts because you're hormonal or menopausal, you may just need number four. So it can be a standalone product that you sell to your clients uh, because of their particular uh, circumstance. If you do have people that are having challenges with their skin, such as a grade five acne, where their skin is very stressed, you may want to suggest cleansing and masking before they come in for treatments with the professional products, the salicylic and the alpha hydroxy peel. So you can see how the skin is changing in terms of the erythemic state. You want to reduce stress to the skin uh, to some degree so that how uh, you, you're creating a situation where there's not as much trauma to the area. The cytokine response can be quite traumatic when you're doing uh, acid peels, but again, you have the anti-inflammatories and the soothing agents such as the aloe and the chemical peels. So the before and after when you're looking at pictures can be Within a short period of time, this is an example of where we're looking at uh, one skin cycle, which is one month. So you can see the evolution of the skin. You'll notice that even in the after picture, there is some local erythema. It is a bit of a genetic response that we're also looking at, but things take time to change. And if you're looking at a systemic condition such as digestive imbalance or chronic stress, the situation doesn't change if the person is not addressing some of the internal fluctuations that may be occurring. So we can work on the outside to change how a skin looks, but we need to also address what's going on in the inside because that makes a big difference in the long run as well. So consider the things that would be beneficial to an individual in terms of how they change, uh, how their skin needs to be affected from stress and from lifestyle choices. But the most important thing is that how they have to be given the responsibility for looking after themselves because the onus is really on the individual and we are just there to help to assist them in going forward so that their skin looks great. So please try our bioacne products. Again, it's the first certified organic medical grade acne line in the world. And just as a little footnote, the blue background is actually to signify for those people that maybe feel familiar with light therapy, the blue wavelength of light, which is uh, 400 nanometers, you're looking there at uh, light therapy being utilized for killing the P. acnes bacterium. Not all facilities are able to use light, but this is an alternative method of treating the skin and can be implemented with our protocols as well. So if you have an LED device and you have the wavelength of blue, you can use it. Also with our uh, IPL360, we have parameters specifically for treating acne and this is where the blue wavelength is also utilized. So we can actually combine protocol with our products. And for those of you that wanna go further in medical aesthetics, we also have the manual technique called morpholymphatic drainage that could be essential for helping with temporary reducing the edema uh, that may be occurring with an individual because of their inflammation and where their balance needs to be readjusted. So thank you. A lot of things to consider in future presentations. We're going to be talking about pigmentation and how it not only is affected by the sun, but how it can be related to acne and also acne rosacea 
and the different stages of acne rosacea, but the differentiate between acne rosacea and acne vulgaris will be also important in terms of you being able to treat your clients more specifically with what their needs may be. And you can have a combination of acne rosacea with acne vulgaris. So to be able to differentiate between the two conditions and to solve the weakest problem will make a big difference uh, for your clients. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you on our next uh, visit.